Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video and another laptop. This Dell Latitude D800. So this is a Pentium M735, uh, I think, processor. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it later to see exactly which one it is. But uh, a Pentium M-based machine, uh, not Windows 10 capable. So uh, we're, uh, we're, we're making a Windows XP machine out of this, but a uh, nice little design, hefty, hefty machine. Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say this would be like a workstation class system, but it's definitely close to it given the design and the specs. So nice little case design here. We'll take a look on the front, nice rugged clip there to release the, uh, the laptop front hinge. Uh, our stereo speakers on the front, Taking a look on this side, we've got a Kensington lock. Our hard drive bay is in here. And then we've got our audio ports. We've got an infrared, <laughs> infrared port, as well as our uh, PCMCA card slot. And it's got a, a blank in here. You can, you know, kind of slide in there to be able to fit, take up the space and not let dust and critters and whatever get into it. A mini IEEE 1394 Firewire port. When we switch around to the back here, we've got some venting. This is actually cool on the bottom here, I do want to mention. This whole part here, two screws comes out and the fan assembly for cooling the system actually just pops out and can be replaced. So nice, cool modular design on this system from a serviceability perspective. Um, that was one of the reasons why I thought to myself, yeah, you know, this is a little bit of a step up from a basic laptop, definitely a business machine. Uh, power plug, serial port, VGA port, and printer port. So, you know, these two will spell some of the age of the machine as well. And then modem and Ethernet ports, USB ports, and an S video output. And then coming around the back here, we've got our DVD ROM slash CD burner and uh, some more USB connectivity. And then another Kensington lock. So double the Kensington. All right, here we go. Flipping it open, we'll take a look at the keyboard area. This is very cool. Very certainly letting you know that from a Dell perspective, this is a business machine because they actually put a track point on it, uh, which is, you know, what you should have on every machine. Anyways, <laughs> uh, keyboard is okay. Nothing to write home about. Uh, power buttons, volume control, mute buttons, some indicator lights. We've got a track point with the uh, two little clicky mouse uh, buttons, which are kind of not enjoyable to use. And then a really terrible tiny touchpad and then two very large buttons on the bottom here. And I actually found when using this, um, I've noted this before on some Dell laptops, the buttons for the track point are too close. Uh, I'm used to it being a little bit farther away when I'm using a ThinkPad than the way they have these lined up here. And it's actually uncomfortable. So I actually found was more comfortable to have my finger resting to use my the mouse to move around on the track point nub and then clicking these mouse buttons down here, which was a little bit counterintuitive, but it actually, you know, it actually ended up working a little bit better because these buttons are much easier. The, the presses on these ones record much better. Uh, screen wise, it's just 15.4 inch screen, no scratches or tears or dots or breakage or anything. Actually, this system all in all is in is in very good shape. Uh, in fact, what was even kind of nice is it came with two batteries and both of them are still able to hold charges, um, which is actually quite impressive for a system of this of this age uh, in terms of, you know, being a like 2003, 2004 age machine and still having batteries that can hold a charge for a uh, reasonable period of time. So kind of cool. We'll pop it open now and boot it up and you can take a look with me at what I installed. All right, I'm gonna hit the old power button. And I did not, I did not plug this in using the accompanying AC adapter that I have for it because as I mentioned, battery power still works on this system. So we've installed Windows XP on this machine. Uh, the processor itself does not have the very basic NX bit functionality to be able to run Windows 10. Uh, and you know, given the age and support levels, if I had the choice between running Windows, a Windows XP machine or a Windows 7 machine, um, I'm not even sure if this system would run Windows 7, um, but I'd rather just drop all the way back down to Windows XP. It has more of a retro flair for people who want to continue to use machines that are a little bit older. And if it won't run Windows 10, which means I can't really donate it, uh, this will have to do for maybe someone who wants to uh, have a, a play machine or you know maybe a machine that they're just gonna use offline 
for some productivity work or for watching DVD movies or something like that. Uh, so uh, the system uh, from a performance perspective is pretty decent. We'll get hardware info up and running here and I will show you what is running on the system uh, from a specs perspective. Software rise, as I mentioned, we've got the Windows XP Professional and I've got that running up to the unofficial service pack four. So we've got as many of the security features that you could possibly add to XP. Again, it's still you know not incredibly safe for using online and I would never put any of my personal data on a machine that still had XP installed on it or connected up to my you know, like home network shares. It would be you know kind of sitting off on its own. Uh, software wise, I installed MyPal, which is a still kept up to date browser for Windows XP. Uh, then uh, VLC Media Player and Image Burn for the optical drive and watching movies and videos and stuff. OpenOffice 4.1.8, which is the final version of OpenOffice that works on Windows XP. And I downloaded a couple of the Dell software packages that ran on this one. So there's like the Dell Quick Set capability, kind of like a configuration utility for the machine to have better control over seeing what's plugged in where. Specs wise, we've got this Pentium M735 processor, as I mentioned, uh, not capable of running Windows 10, but it's a 1.7 gigahertz processor, single core, single thread. We've got a 40 gig hard drive and that combo drive in there. We have a two gigabytes of memory, which is the most memory that the system will take, a pair of one gig DIMMs. And that's perfectly fine for Windows XP. And then we've got this NVIDIA GeForce FX Go 5200, and it can go to hell in terms of the ridiculously terrible performance that it gives. Um, with just 32 megabytes of SD RAM, uh, I would rather just have, you know, the generic GMA video card that uh, most machines of this time would have come with. Um, it's really not that good a performer. You're not going to be able to play games or anything like that with this graphics adapter. Um, maybe get away with playing some 2D games, right? So a machine like this could run like a Baldur's Gate, perhaps, but you're not going to be getting a heck of a lot of performance. You're not going to be playing any of the top games of this era, right? There's not going to be any Half-Life 2 going on this machine or anything like that um, to, uh, to get it up and running. So uh, for that perspective, it's you know kind of fitting for a lot of the laptops of this time that they were never really the intention that anyone would want to game on them. So why would you bother putting anything powerful on it? But I can tell by that graphics card that it's just not quite there with the professional workstations that were in and around this time that did have a little bit more power to them to be able to handle something um, with a little bit more energy. I think the A31P ThinkPad from IBM, which I believe had 128 megabyte video card in it, which made sense like okay now you've got a more powerful card for doing some CAD work or whatever it was this is just a little bit lower than I would have expected um, a machine of this time to be having anyways that's the tour of the system uh, I'm not going to bother with doing anything like online performance or anything like that because it's really you know it's not it's not useful for anything more than just simple web browsing you're not going to be able to watch YouTube on anything higher than like 144p and you're probably still going to have frame drops like crazy so <laughs> it is what it is Anyways, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at uh, this system with me. If you have a Dell Latitude D800, please, you know, let me know in the comments what you if you're still using it, what you're using it for. Did you do upgrades to it? Did you swap out the processor for something more powerful? Um, is there some hidden firmware update or, or alternate uh, BIOS that you can flash on this system to be able to open up some additional functionality? What have you done with your system um, that uh, someone could possibly want to do to this one to pimp it out even more? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. As always, uh, thanks for hanging out and checking out my videos. Hope you're staying safe and healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.